G'day and welcome to today's MUM36 Rebuild episode where we show you how to remove a worn ring gear from your flywheel and we're doing this to prevent it from continually breaking our starter motors when they were failing to engage correctly. After removing the engine in our previous video it quickly became apparent how much water must have been sitting in Jabberwocky while it lay dormant in Dublin Bay. The starboard engine bracket and bolts had basically rusted off with the plate falling off as we moved the engine. And taking a look at the amount of rust on the coupling plate and how rock solid it was fixed, the water must have been at least halfway up the engine. The mounting bolts came out okay, but the plate would not move. It was persuaded to come out by using a bearing draw leg put through the centre hole and tightened onto a piece of channel iron. The tool is on the right of the picture and the tide mark can be seen on the flywheel. The flywheel was then unbolted, removed and taken back to the workshop for cleaning and examination. The 97 teeth on the ring gear were examined and you can see that they're in pretty poor state. A new ring gear and a pair of engine mounts were ordered along with a couple of hoses and filters for a service. When the parts arrived it was easy to see just how worn the teeth were. The outside of the new ring was determined at this stage. After checking that the new ring gear was correct Preparations were made to remove the old one. With access to oxyacetylene, it was possible to expand the old ring off the flywheel. But with that not available, we had to revert to a method used by our chief engineer when he used to build a racing car engine. Two spaced center punch marks are made on the ring gear. A drill depth is then measured against the new ring gear to prevent damage to the flywheel. Two holes are drilled in the old ring gear and it is split off using a cold chisel. The flywheel was then cleaned and the new ring gear suspended on a rod from a vise in preparation for heating. It is necessary to heat the ring gear sufficiently to expand it to a greater diameter than the flywheel. It takes around 200 degrees Celsius. Any excess heat can ruin the ring gear but trying to fit it if it's not sufficiently expanded will also destroy it. We measured the diameter of the flywheel and set the calipers to one millimeter above that figure. We also used a grease pencil that melts at 200 degrees C to allow us to monitor the temperatures. The ring gear was heated evenly until the vernier fitted inside it. It was then held in welding gauntlets and dropped over the flywheel. It immediately gripped the flywheel and became cool. Reassembling the flywheel to the engine requires use of a torque wrench to be sure the bolts are tight enough but not too tight. The torque figures are given in the engine service handbook. A tool had to be made to hold the flywheel to allow it and the coupling plate to be torqued. A length of aluminium bar and two M8 socket head cap screws matted up with balancing holes in the flywheel. This tool allowed the flywheel and coupling plate to be properly secured. The engine was then reinstalled with new engine mounts. Servicing the engine compartment and reassembling in preparation for testing. I hope you enjoyed today's video and learned something along the way. If you did, why not leave us a like and check out some of the other videos from our MUM36 Rebuild project.